I'm here with the Air Force One and it's great, great new term I'm from Taraj Mercadam. Taraj, how are you today? Lovely, thank you very much. Tell us thank about the coming. arm. It's um, talk of the show. Um, the, 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 the mission was to try and understand how much we could get from the groove. Was there any more in there? Wasn't it? Um, to do that, obviously you need to go all the way. So, um, starting from the record itself, looking at the fact that most of the lower frequency is mono and it's lateral, and then as the frequency you go towards the higher frequencies, then it becomes a modulated mm -hmm. in up and down and left and right. Um, <clears throat> you soon find out that for the toner to accommodate the, 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 the record by being able to constantly move sideways and up and down, mm -hmm. um, you don't want the information that is at very low frequencies to start moving the arm and at the same time you don't want the uh, very low motion of the record surface that you want it to move the arm to impede on the signal. So structurally um, the tone arm uses different materials. You have an arm tube and a head shield made from titanium and fused welded you have aluminium structure for the bearing assembly using stainless steel and also tungsten carbide for the counterweight, etc. Um, we split the geometry so that on a horizontal plane you have a 240 millimeter effective length, and on a vertical plane you have a 263 millimeter vertical uh, uh, effective length. Because you're balancing the, the arm for tracking force on a vertical mode, the counterweight is, is a certain distance from the bearing that is moving the arm up and down. But when it comes to laterally, the counterweight is actually further back from the lateral bearing. I see that, okay. So what happens is you have far more effective second moments of area for the uh, information in the groove to be able to move that arm. As the frequency goes higher, it's easier for it to move the, the tone arm and you don't lose the information. The bearings themselves, we don't use rotary bearings because you don't actually need a bearing that can rotate. Um, with a tone arm, you have uh, approximately 20, 22 degrees of freedom that you need vertically and uh, maybe 60 degrees horizontally to go from the rest position to the inner groove. Mm -hmm. So if you don't require a rotary bearing, you can, by applying a different solution, overcome the fact that when you have a um, sliding surface, um, you, you are constantly coming to stop and changing direction. And every time you come to stop, you, the uh, friction doubles up, comes back down to normal, and then doubles up, comes back to normal. Now, by having a laminate of polymer and metal effectively just bending during that angle, you overcome this issue. It does put a lot of strain on machining and material selections, and the time, for example, to, to machine one tone arm on very high precision machinery could be 120 hours or so. So it does have its cost and the materials are not particularly cheap. Mm -hmm. But it has one advantage is that once you've done it and you see that it's worth the result, the result is actually worth doing that, you can go that little bit further and improve upon certain ergonomic things on the toner. So we, we even make uh, things like the lift floor device is all designed and made, um, the uh, illumination for the tracking and anti-skate etc. You have uh, adjustable for uh, if you want it uh, switched off or uh, uh, turned up or dimmed etc. Also um, in for, for the wiring of the system I'm using the uh, handmade pulse cable but the internal wiring is a a, a better version of the handmade pulse that we do for internal wiring of uh, many tone arms we've done in the past six years. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it sure is a tour de force, and a lot of people are talking about it in the industry because I think that the kicker is it is how much USD? Yes, thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. But uh, it's a little bit like you, you, if you go to um, Sebastian and say, "I want you next season to shave off 0.1 of a second per lap." Uh, what do we need? Yeah. Well, if you need to spend ten million yeah. on correcting one screw on the cowling or something, mm -hmm. you have to spend 10 million on the cowling to get that point one of a second. Well, I get that, and I think that that's what puts high performance audio in the echelon of super desirable products for people who have the passion and the wherewithal yeah, sure, to, sure. To, to adopt them and use but, them in their own home. Yeah, but, but because, it, because the Tono is a weak link, uh, rather than being an enhancement, I identified it as a weak link. I, 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 I looked at turntables, and although there are many turntables very different to the principles that I use for designing turntables, yet they do deliver. But they are limited by the toner. And that is why I believe this is totally uh, justified at whatever price it would have come out as, obviously, not ludicrous, but whatever price it would have come out as, if you, you the whole package, because Tornam on its own can't do anything. Turntable on its own can't do anything. It's a system, and you add everything up. If the end result is bigger than what you expected from that outlay, then it's totally justified. Well, there you go, right from the horse's mouth. <laughs> Taraj, thank you very much for the walkthrough of the Most Tone Arm. Welcome. It's, uh, again, it's a talk of 2013. <laughs> Wish you lots of success with it. Thank uh, you you're very much. You're really punching the limit and uh, taking things to another level. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you, Vic.